Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for i5 for the iPhone is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This episode of i5 for the iPhone is brought to you by Gazelle, the fast and simple way to sell your used gadgets. Find out what your used iPhone, iPad, and other Apple products are worth at gazelle.com. Hello there. Welcome to i5 for the iPhone, episode 83. This is the show where we go spelunking into the depths of the App Store for handy news apps, tips, and tricks. And we try really hard not to get covered in bat droppings, because that's gross. I'm Sarah Lane, your guide to all things iOS. Shall we dance? Number one. Let's start off with something that many of us cannot possibly live without. Caffeine. Now, in my case, I have a morning cup of coffee. It's good. I pay $3 for it. But, you know, it could also be tea. Soda has caffeine, too. Maybe you like energy drinks. The point is, a lot of us really, really rely on caffeine to not go postal on a daily basis. So that's why I like a new app from Jawbone Labs called Up Coffee. The idea is caffeine can make you feel good, more alert, a lot smarter, etc. But it's also important to understand how it works, how it affects our brains, and how much is too much, and how it affects your sleep. It's a big problem that I have. If you enter your caffeine intake each day into the app, the time that you consume it, and in what form, like my coffee habit never really deviates. I drink a cup of coffee first thing in the morning around 7 a.m., a little bit different on the weekend, but your own habits may vary. Up Coffee is easy to navigate and is collecting all that data for you. Based on when you down your caffeinated beverages, the app knows when you're kind of wired, maybe you're a little too wired, and how long it'll take you to become sleep ready. Of course, this is not only depending on the time of day, but it also depends on your gender, your weight, how sensitive you are to caffeine. I tend to get shaky if I drink caffeine after like noon. So Up Coffee knows to be conservative with my goal times. Now after seven days of input, you unlock a series of database reports on how your body reacts to caffeine and what your caffeine persona is. The truth is, I don't really drink that much coffee because if I do, I don't sleep that well. And I already know that, I mean, years of misuse. So Up Coffee is kind of telling me what I already know, but if you drink either a ton of caffeine, you have sleep issues, or both, it's a great little quantified way to get more information about if you're making good consumption decisions. And the app is free. Number two. So last week on The Social Hour, the weekly show I host with the lovely and talented Amber MacArthur, we took a really quick look at a brand new app called Stellar, which Amber thought seemed a little bit like a combination of path and medium, a storytelling app with a focus on both visuals, like photos and videos, and the context around them. And after spending some time on Stellar, I love it. I think it's incredible. It works as a tool for a ton of different kinds of stories. Like uh, a recipe would work well, because there's a book page flipping design, it just makes sense. Travel stories are very compelling. I was reading one from a trip to Honduras by somebody named Andrew Strain, who I don't know, but I love his work. I actually learned a lot, and I felt like I was there. I can collect stories and organize them into my own collections, or of course I can create my own by choosing photos, videos, adding texts, multiple pages. It's really easy, their templates are nice. And when I'm done, I can share my story and rack up the likes if I do a good job. And of course, I can follow other storytellers as well. Stellar is awesome, it's free. I hope that you use it and I hope that you put together a really great story and I hope that you share it with me. Number three, so we got a duh tip from Anthony, who has a possible solution for anybody who feels like they're getting kind of dissed on iPhone battery life. He writes, after having my iPhone 5 for over a year, I noticed that my battery life had decreased a great deal and I was experiencing crashes consistently when my phone reached about 35% battery. I suspected my battery had degraded over time. I was looking at buying a Mophie case, but I really wasn't a fan of the extra bulk. After going to the Genius Bar, I found out that they'd replace my battery for $75 
about $5 less than the Mophie Helium case. The entire repair took less than 20 minutes and I couldn't be happier with my improved battery life. So don't assume that a battery issue is software related. They ran a diagnostic at the Apple store and found that mine was in bad health. The replacement was painless and quick. Thank you, Anthony. So I've never actually done this myself, not with an iPhone, but battery hardware issues do happen. I've definitely had to replace a MacBook battery here and there. Remember when they were exploding a few years ago? I had one of those. Hardware isn't always fail-proof. So yeah, if you suspect something's just not right, a trip to the Genius Bar will at least help you rule out a faulty battery or maybe give you some options if you do need a replacement. This episode of i5 for the iPhone is brought to you by Gazelle. If you're thinking about getting a new iPhone or a new iPad, Gazelle wants to buy your used iPhone, iPad, or other smartphone for cash. In fact, you can lock in your price today and then send your gadget to Gazelle when you get your new one because Gazelle's offer is good for 30 days. They'd lock it in for you. Gazelle makes selling your used gadgets really fast, really easy. Go to gazelle.com, that's G-A-Z-E-L-L-E.com, and just enter your item. Tell Gazelle the condition your item's in. And don't worry if it's not in perfect condition because they'll even buy broken iPhones and iPads. Then you get that risk-free offer for your gadgets and they even throw in free shipping. When it's time to get paid, PayPal, by check, or an extra 5% if you choose an Amazon gift card, it's cash. Payment is fast. It's within a few days of the item being received. And again, those offers are good for 30 days. Lock it in now. It'll give you time to transfer data and set up that new device. You don't want a big old drawer full of gadgets that you're not using. You want to get money for them from Gazelle. Gazelle will even wipe your data for free, so you don't have to worry about that either. It's easy, free shipping. Most items qualify for a free box. The process is fast, and you've got a lot of gadgets to choose from. iPhone 5, 16 gig, AT&T. Does that sound like something you're not using anymore? Maybe you switched to Verizon some time ago. Get that, get that back to Gazelle. Get some cash for it. What is that iPhone worth? Take a minute and go to gazelle.com to find out. Do it now because your iPhone may lose value the longer you wait. Thanks so much to Gazelle for sponsoring this episode of i5. Number four. Okay, time for our regular installments of which new photography app has Sarah discovered this time? I like to consider myself a photo app connoisseur of sorts, you know? This week we're looking at something called Juxtaposer. It's kind of a clever name. It helps you combine multiple pictures into photo montages. So you choose a background and a foreground image, and then you use Juxtaposer's tools to selectively erase and zoom and rotate whatever. Make your work of art. Make it weird. I hope you make it weird. Why not? It doesn't have to be two single photos either. You've got 20 blend modes like multiply, screen, and overlay for a lot of unique effects. And you can add tons of elements to your background image as well. The red mask view mode shows you just the top image with the erased parts in red. That's really helpful when you're cutting out a specific element. I was able to create an image of myself sitting on some coconut palm trees pretty easily, zooming way in on my top image and then erasing everything around my dress. It was a little cumbersome, but it certainly wasn't hard. And the end result is really quite lovely. Okay, it's really quite weird, but you know, whatever. That's the point, right? For $2.99, Juxtaposer is a pretty powerful tool for iPhoneographers everywhere. And yes, you and I are iPhoneographers. I would love to see your best effort, by the way. Send your weird stuff to i5 at twit.tv. Finally, number five. We got an email from Ben in Omaha, Nebraska who's lost a very important app. Ben writes, I lost the camera app on my iPhone. How do I bring this back? If I do a restore, will that wipe out all my contacts? Please help. Okay, well, the very, very, very first thing that I would do is make sure that you didn't accidentally put it in a folder or move it somewhere. I know you probably didn't, but it's just worth checking. Use the search tool by swiping down on your home screen and typing in camera. If it does not show up under applications, then you have a couple options. Under settings, general, and then way down at the bottom, reset, as long as you're running iOS 7.1, you have quite a few new options. Resetting all your settings would be the first step. You're not erasing, you're just basically giving your phone a hard reset, which should help with certain issues with random restarts. People have found that's helpful. You will have to re-enter some info though, like Wi-Fi network passwords, but it can help with performance issues. Now, erasing all content and settings is probably not what you're looking for, 
But if that camera app is indeed on your phone but not showing up, you can reset your home screen layout in order to get it back front and center. By the way, for anybody whose dictionary has gotten out of control with custom word shortcuts and the like, a new reset keyboard dictionary should help you start over. Me? I just really, really, really want autocorrect to stop suggesting nonsensical words that I have never typed and never will type. Seriously, it's driving me to drink. I know this show goes by fast, but don't worry. All of our show notes live forever in perpetuity at twit.tv slash i5. App links, subscribe links, they're all at twit.tv slash i5. Email us at i5 at twit.tv with questions, app suggestions, comments, whatever. Leave us voicemails at 614-ON-I-5 or send us a video with an app review of your own. We appreciate you watching us each week and we want to keep you happy, so all feedback is good feedback. I'm Sarah Lane, this is i5 for the iPhone, and I'll see you all next week. Thanks for watching.